Mr. Pulley back with you for Fieldcrest World Cultures, this time looking at our third chapter in Latin America, chapter 22, Latin America in Transition. Okay, so let's go back and recap a little bit of our revolutions in Latin America and the places where those take place. Um, some of the earliest ones are Argentina in 1816, uh, we actually got Paraguay in 1811, uh, Chile in 1818, the same year that Illinois becomes a state, uh, Ecuador 1822, Colombia, which was actually at the time of revolution, Colombia and, and uh, Venezuela called Gran Colombia was 1819, Colombia separates off in 1821, Mexico also in 1821, Central American uh, provinces in 1823. So as you can see, a lot of countries in South America are getting their independence. Uh, Haiti, of course, the second republic in the Western Hemisphere, got their, their independence uh, in 1804. Empire Brazil, not until 1822. Okay, and while they had revolutions, it didn't always lead to democracy. There were problems involved in a lot of cases. Uh, one of the problems even later on is as we got into the 70s because there was so much turmoil in the governments uh, a lot of governments in Latin America were seized or taken control of by the military. The military comes in, throws out the guy in charge and takes over and we have now a military government. Uh, in many cases a lot of those were actually supported by the United States because they helped to bring stability for American businesses that were operating in the region. Okay. Now, whenever the uh, military overthrows the government, we call that by the French term a coup d'etat. So, a vocab term for you guys, coup d'etat, military overthrowing the government. Okay. Examples of that in Chile, uh, in uh, Western South America, uh, General Augusto Pinochet overthrew uh, a gentleman by the name of Salvador Allende. Uh, he came in and was trying to modernize the company, or excuse me, trying to modernize the country. Uh, but in doing so, he was trying to take away some American businesses. We didn't really care for that. So when Pinochet takes charge, we actually kind of bless that takeover. Okay. In Argentina, we had a, a former military colonel by the name of Juan Perón, who is elected to government. Uh, he will later be overthrown. Uh, the government that takes over uh, had frequent uh, human rights violations, including uh, tens of thousands of people who literally were for, referred to as the disappeared. They were arrested, never heard from or seen again. Uh, you may know Juan Perón from his wife, uh, Eva Perón, uh, and musical Evita. Uh, she was a champion of the poor people, uh, dearly loved, and when she died, he sort of lost some of his popularity and that led to his being overthrown. Final one we're going to look at is in Mexico, where a dictator um, took control, and uh, Porfirio Diaz actually rules from 1876 to 1911, when we finally have another revolution which takes over in Mexico. Okay, lots of social and economic issues in Latin America, and let's look at some of those now. One of them has to do with housing. And as they tried to modernize their countries, people moved to the cities in order to try and find jobs, especially a lot of those peasants that didn't have any land out in the rural areas. Okay, And that rapid urbanization in Latin America has led to shortages of both housing and services, services being things like hospital, busing, uh, electricity, water, sewage, schooling, all those things that we take for granted uh, they didn't have. And while they looks like there's literally hundreds of houses here. A lot of these are sort of ramshackle things thrown together by people and not really that great or safe places to live, especially when you consider all the um, tectonic activity and volcanoes and earthquakes that take place in Latin America. Okay, other social economic... Other social and economic issues deal with ideas of money and their economy. Um, a lot of these countries, in order to industrialize, borrow money from other countries around the world, and when they can't pay that back or something goes wrong in their economy, they're left with the staggering debt, okay? But also issues of if there's a rapid increase in prices, which is called inflation, that is another thing that's led to their debt crises, okay? This helped lead Mexico, Argentina, and Brazil to all have a major debt crisis. They borrowed money, there's a rapid increase in prices, so the value of the money has gone down. They're trying to pay back the debt, and uh, people, things aren't selling, the government's not making any money. That leads to a debt crisis. Most of these countries have gotten out of those debts today. Uh, Brazil, for example, has a very strong growing economy, Argentina as well. So 
in the short term, it was a huge problem for them, but uh, in the long term, most of them will come out of that. Okay. Other social and economic issues was that idea of those landless farmers. And some countries tried to solve that, uh, primarily in Mexico, by taking land from some people and giving it back to the poor. But they didn't want to take it from the wealthy people who controlled the land and just give it away to small farmers. What they did was created uh, farming communities. Uh, and these communities were called ejidos. And then an ejido, what happened is you got to live there and farm there, but the land technically wasn't yours. It was a collective sort of farm. Um, in the system, farmers could sell their crops, but you couldn't sell the land because it's not yours. Um, if you want to look for an example, something that is actually sort of a socialist or socialism kind of idea, that's pretty close to one. Okay, social and economic issues. Also, let's take a quick look at the country of Cuba, just off of uh, this 90 miles from Florida. We'll talk about that a little bit more in the next chapter as well. But in Cuba, we had a problem. Their revolution, well, they imposed a communist regime. And because of that, the United States imposed an embargo on them. An embargo is a ban designed to uh, hurt trade uh, of another country. And by a ban on trade to that country, we were trying to hurt their economy. How big a hurt we put on their economy? Well, this, yes, that right there, that's considered a new car in Cuba. Other social economic issues uh, had to do with trade, the opposite sort of, of putting an embargo or blocking trade or putting high costs on importing something from some other country. The opposite of that is trying to get rid of those costs. And an example of that would be the North American Free Trade Agreement or NAFTA. Okay, recent agreements such as NAFTA on free trade, this is where countries lower or end their tariffs, and a tariff being an import tax, NAFTA being an agreement between the United States, Canada, and Mexico. And finally, a quick look at ethnic diversity in Latin America. We're going to look at two examples, Brazil and Argentina. So quickly looking at this thing, Brazil, for example, had migrations to the country by various ethnic groups from around the world, including Africans brought originally as slaves, the original Portuguese who came over and colonized that, uh, still small groups of Native Americans there, uh, but also other Europeans from uh, other parts of Europe. And recently, uh, in the 80s, for example, a big influx of people from Japan, uh, so much so that at one time, uh, the, um, the Prime Minister of Brazil was a man by the name of Alberto Fujimora. In Argentina, uh, quite different from some other Latin American countries, 95% of the population in Argentina is of European descent, uh, mostly Spanish and Italian, but also large groups of Germans, British, and other Eastern European groups. Okay, a quick look, but uh, a quick overview of things in Chapter 22. Uh, again, this should help you answer most of your questions on your study guide. If you didn't get that done, hey, back this up, get your study guide out, try it again. See you soon with a lesson on Chapter 22.